Of friends, as you all know, we are approaching the season for carols. <laughs> and whether by happenstance or deliberate action, our words of encouragement will be br brought to you this morning by another carol <laughs> uh, who will no doubt take you on an adventure into truth uh, that will land you on other planes as you soar towards your spiritual magnificent. So for another lesson in truth, practitioner Carol Campbell. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't decide whether to title my talk this morning, Ah Men, or Ah Men, or Ah Men. So I settled on a title that said Destination Destiny. Richard Bach, author of Jonathan Livingston Seagull, said, what the caterpillar calls the end of the road, the master calls a butterfly. Do you know what you call a female moth? A myth. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> there is a creative energy to life that is constant and relentless, operating through all life forms and through each of us to fulfill the deepest desires of our hearts. The way it works is quite mysterious in that we don't quite understand the how, even though we recognize the effects of creative energy at work. We have an idea, we commit to the fulfillment of that idea, and the forces of the universe conspire to make it happen. And then voila, there it is in living color. We plant a seed in fertile soil. The soil receives it and goes to work. Then at the appropriate time, roots go down, shoots come up, and before long, the original seed is all used up by the energy needed to produce a tree. As with all creation, the process happens in secret. All growth happens in the within, in the ground, in the womb, in the cocoon, inside the egg, in the subconscious mind. We know something is going on, and we know energy and intelligence are involved. And yet, with all our high-tech instruments, that actually makes it possible to watch the process of life being created, we still don't know how the cells that are required to produce a fingernail find each other. And did you know that there are specific cells to produce fingernails, lungs, hair, skin, etc.? As a matter of fact, in the case of the creation of human life, we still don't even know how the sperm gets inside the egg because there is no access. What we do know is that without the sperm and the egg coming together, there is no fertilization and therefore no birth, no manifestation. Relax, this is not about the birds and the bees. This is about the creative process which requires a perfect balance of masculine and feminine energies to bring any idea to fruition. What do I mean when I talk about masculine and feminine energies? This is not gender specific. I'm not talking about men and women necessarily, although they are related. Both men and women share these energies. Both men and women have masculine and feminine energies. That doesn't mean that men who display dominant feminine energies are wimps and sissies, or that women who display dominant masculine energies are butch dominatrix, no. Each gender has a dominant depending on the circumstance, so it's constantly changing. Right now, me standing up here talking to you, I'm using more masculine energy. I have to be purposeful, powerful, passionate. However, when I was preparing the talk, I was using more feminine energy. I had to be creative, intuitive, receptive, responsive to spirit's promptings. I had to take action and write the talk so that I could be standing here being passionate, purposeful, and powerful, which is the demonstrated effect of the perfect balance of masculine and feminine energies. 
In the Science of Mind textbook written by Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of science, religious science, there is what is referred to as a metaphysical chart, which illustrates the aspects of mind, capital M, mind. There really is only one mind with different aspects, and the chart outlines the differences between masculine and feminine aspects and the result of their collaboration. The masculine aspect is the conscious phase of mind, spirit, first cause, the idea, the intention, passion, purpose, power, the decision maker. Masculine energy says, I want and I can. The feminine aspect is a subconscious phase, the soul. It's receptive, it's creative, holistic, intuitive, submissive and responsive, committed and eternal. It is the soil. The feminine says, I do, and gets to work doing it. The third aspect of mind is the effect, the form, the demonstrated fulfillment of the idea. Let me see if I can simplify this even more. Masculine energy is about the idea. But without the feminine energy, it remains an idea only, forever. Feminine energy is about the potential, the ability to make something happen. But without an idea to work on, it remains as pure potential, forever. Let's say I have an idea, I want to make chocolate cake. In the kitchen, I have eggs, flour, sugar, sour cream, chocolate, great potential. But do I have chocolate cake? Not yet. Not until the idea of chocolate cake and the potential for chocolate cake are brought together is there any possibility of the experience of chocolate cake. Get it? Not until I plant the seed in the soil will I get to have the tree. If I only ever hold the seed in my hand, it stays as an idea of tree. Once I release the seed to the soil, once I release the idea to the feminine energy, it takes over, accepting full responsibility and commits to bringing that idea to fruition unquestioningly. It simply submits to the idea, to the desire. The soil doesn't argue or question or judge the worth of rose bushes over love bush. <laughs> it grows each with equal commitment and efficiency. Once the sperm has fertilized the egg, its work is done. The egg knows what to do from then on and simply does it. We don't even have to do anything except be a gracious hostess for a few months. <laughs> every seed, every egg, every idea has its appropriate time to push through the soil, to break out of the shell, to be experienced. Our individual consciousness facilitates the fertilization of the idea. And once fertilized, we must leave it alone and patiently allow it to grow. An acorn doesn't become an oak tree overnight. When the inner consciousness agrees with the truth about the idea in the absolute, then and only then does a demonstration take place. It's our unwavering commitment to the decision to allow X to take place that actually allows X to take place. In every egg, in every seed, there is the potential for a living, breathing form. But not every acorn will grow into an oak tree. Not every egg will become manifest form. Not every idea will be fulfilled. We're speaking about faith here, which is the absolute confidence that God is our nature, our health, our prosperity, our all, our good. Emma Curtis Hopkins, who Vance referred to this morning, was also the teacher of Dr. Ernest Holmes. And she says, our firm belief in any principle will lead to a demonstration of the power in that principle, end quote. In our Declaration of Principles of the Science of Mind, we read, we believe in the power of this mind which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts upon it. Everything begins first in mind, and it comes through our thoughts. In this mind is the most important faculty we possess, 
the imagination. Imagination is the creative power of God in man. It truly is the key to the kingdom of heaven. This is not wishful thinking. This is how we create our individual realities. Imagination can put you in the state of your desire when you declare what you really want. By that I mean we live in our consciousness, not the other way around. We are wherever we are in our imagination. Imagining creates reality. Close your eyes for a minute. Take a deep breath and relax. Right now, you're actually sitting in a large wooden rocking chair on the wraparound veranda of a great house perched on a hill overlooking a plantation in St. Anne's Bay. It's late evening, and in the distance, you can just catch a glimpse of the blue sea and the white foam of waves breaking on the shore. The sounds of night birds and crickets mingle in the cool night air, which gently caresses your skin. The scent of jasmine and frangipani float in on the breeze, and you inhale with a satisfied smile. There's a soft mohair blanket thrown over the right arm of the chair. You wrap it around you, snuggling in it against the chill. From inside the house oozes the irresistible smell of fresh bread baking. Your mouth waters as you anticipate the sweet, warm crunch of the bread dripping with butter. Mmm. Enough of that. <laughs> Come back here. Take a deep breath. <laughs> How many of you actually went there with me? Did you leave this room? No, not physically, but you were very present to the experience. Consider this. Real reality is not factual. Take that home and ponder on it. <laughs> the world of form and experience, which seems very real and very solid, is totally within our imagination. We just demonstrated that. What the world looks like to you and to me depends entirely on where we're standing when we're looking at it. For instance, from the caterpillar's perspective, the world of the butterfly seems like an absolute impossibility. But the butterfly has a totally different view. She only sees the tops of things and has no sense of earth and roots and trunks. And guess what? They're both right. How can we use this great faculty of imagination on purpose? to demonstrate our deepest desires. You have to be very clear and know exactly what you want. Ask yourself this, what do I want? And then listen for the answer. Too often we get so anxious and caught up in the result, the answer, that we don't take the time to actually listen. To get to the core of what you really want, you need to keep asking the question until you get past the superficial material things and get to the deeper soul reason for the desire. Suppose you ask the question and the first thing that comes up for you is, I want a new car. That's great, nothing wrong with that. Ask again, what do I really want? I want an efficient, hassle-free, comfortable transportation. That's okay too. Ask again. What do I really want? I want to feel safe and secure when I'm traveling around. Now we're getting to what really counts, the feeling that's generating the desire. When we've identified the true desire, we have to feel ourselves into the reality of it with all the sensory vividness that we can muster, like we just did on the plantation veranda. Use the imagination to see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, smell it. Live each day to conform to the desire, and it must manifest. Fake it till you make it is true. It's usually about this time that well-meaning souls will tell you that you're not being very realistic. We believe in the power of this mind that receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. It's about thinking from what you want 
rather than thinking of what you want. Thinking from what you want is having the confidence and faith in the fulfillment of the desire. We're reminded in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, from the New International Version of the Bible, and I quote, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Thinking of what you want is mere hope and is usually accompanied with all kinds of anxiety and frustration at not having the thing you want. And that has the unfortunate effect of keeping the desire at bay, forever not achieving. So why hope when you can dream? What make is this car? What color is it? Walk around it, get behind the wheel, sink into the sumptuous upholstery, grasp the steering wheel, run your hand over the dashboard, smell the new car smell, put the key in the ignition and start the car, listen to the engine purr, step on the gas, feel the engine come alive, take the car out on the highway and enjoy the sensation. It is possible to create the desires of your heart. As Neville Goddard, a new thought luminary said, and I quote, you must choose to be the affector of your circumstance rather than the effector. You are totally and solely responsible for your choices. And you must choose based on your own code of ethics and be in integrity, end quote. Bearing in mind that all choices have consequences, your desire cannot cause harm or ill to anyone else because it will boomerang with amplified force. You cannot, for instance, desire Mary's husband or John's wife. That could have dire consequences. Them could you go to eye. Thou shalt not covet. <laughs> Be open and receptive to the big and bigger picture. Everything you need to create the deepest desires of your heart is within you. Use the masculine energy to set the intention. Be very clear, confident, and purposeful. Know what you really want. Write it down in the present tense and put yourself in the picture. Engage the feminine energy as you commit to the idea and allow yourself to be guided in the appropriate and best ways to achieve the desire. Doors will open where you didn't even know there were doorways. I'm going to share a little story with you. I'll make it quick. Years ago, I wanted to attend a conference in California. Well, it might as well have been in Timbuktu, because I didn't have any way of getting there. But I could find the money for the conference registration. So I sent it in, totally on faith. It occurred to me that my friend had a sister who lived in California. I pick up the phone to call my friend, and she's on the other end of the line. And she says, you know, I was just talking with Gladys, and she was asking about you. I said, gee, funny thing. I was just going to ask you to call her. I couldn't afford to stay at the conference hotel, so I was going to ask her to check out some other accommodation close by to the hotel. She says, I'll, I'll, I'll call her and, and see what she can find out. Within 10 minutes, she calls me back and says, you know, Gladys says that she's just one train ride away from the hotel. Why don't you stay with her? OK, sure. Two down. <laughs> I still don't have any way of getting there. I'm clearing out my desk drawer, and I come across a statement from Canadian Airlines. And it's something I haven't opened. OK, it's been sitting in the drawer. And I decide, let me open it before I throw it out. And I open it, and the statement has exactly enough points to take me to California. OK, great, three down. <laughs> so I go to California. I have very little spending money. Okay, but I decide I'm gonna take some jewelry with me just in case. It gets better. Gladys picks me up at the airport and we go to her house. And she says, you know, my son is away for a month and his car is sitting here. Why don't you use it? You know, really? Okay, <laughs> I'll do that. So not only do I have free accommodation, I have free transportation at my disposal. I can go anywhere I want, do anything I want. The jewelry that I took with me, I didn't take a lot because you, know, you don't want to get too caught up in customs and stuff. 
I took just enough that would be like my own personal jewelry. Well, I sold everything that I took and actually came back $2,000 richer, <laughs> and that's US. So, yes, doors will open where you didn't even know there were doorways when you just make a commitment and get out of the way. Here's an affirmation for you, courtesy of Rod Loomis, practitioner for Science of Mind. I'll say it once, then you can say it with me. I choose this day to step out into life with a confidence and sense of power in my ability to demonstrate my heart's desires. I choose this day to step out into life with a confidence and sense of power in my ability to demonstrate my heart's desires. Take that with you and keep it. We are reminded in the ancient book of wisdom, the Upanishads, that as your desire is, so is your intention. As your intention is, so is your will. As your will is, so is your deed. As your deed is, so is your destiny. Once you plant the seed of intention in the fertile ground of pure potentiality, your soul journey naturally unfolds and automatically, as naturally as a seed becomes a tree, as automatically as an embryo becomes a child. Intend consciously, purposefully, and passionately for everything, everything to work out as it should. Then let go in faith, hands off. If you knew how to do it, you would have done it. You don't have to make anything happen, but you do need to allow it to happen. Don't listen to the committee on your shoulder that's telling you it's not possible and that it's not gonna happen if you're not doing it your way. Be open and receptive to a better way. Has your way been working for you so far? Then why not give this a try? For every desire, every intention, Envision the best outcome in your mind. Let it sink into your consciousness till you feel it deep in your soul and fear and doubt are dissipated and dissolved. Declare in your heart, today is the day of fulfillment. Right now, I have the demonstrated goodness of my God in, through, and as the desires of my deepest heart. Whatever resistance comes up for you, and there will be resistance, that could look like anger, feel like guilt, fear, hopelessness, anxiety, frustration, know that these have come to pass and hold steadfastly to the desired outcome. Thousands of years ago, ancient sages observed that our destiny is shaped by the deepest level of our intention and desire. Jesus told us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And we say, consciousness must take form. Your deepest heartfelt desires are your destiny. Walk good. Namaste. So there you have it, an adventure into truth, stepping out into life from imagination through faith to just what you want. So uh, it's time for the love offerings. We have with us this morning Sharon and Mary. And so we'll re repeat the blessing on the envelope, lovingly I give. Joyfully I receive, be thou fruitful, increase and multiply, bless, prosper and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. So be it, thank you Father, and so it is. The joy song, the joy song this morning. 
to be found on in the on page three of on page three of your program. God's love is deep within me. Satisfied. 